Good morning and welcome to the La Roche University Worshiping Community as we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're so happy to have you with us today in person and virtually from home. As we come to the altar of our provident God, we pray that we may continue to be a blessing for our world. As God has blessed us, we pray that we might be a gift and blessing for each other as well. Our Mass intention today is for Olga and Antonio Giancola. Our celebrant is Father Peter. We hope your day is filled with blessings and peace. Good morning. Good morning. We gather together this morning as a people of faith to celebrate the Eucharist. As we come to the altar of our God, we give praise and thanks for the blessings God has given us and the blessing he has created each one of us to be. That as we are nourished here in word and sacrament and renewed in grace, we may go forth to renew our world and one another with the life, the love, and the life of Christ. With joy we gather as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, coming together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, all of us are aware of those times we have not lived and loved as Christ invites. Once again, we ask our provident God to enter our hearts with mercy and compassion. You came to call all people to salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal our humble and contrite hearts. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You grant us your forgiveness. You fill us with new life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us together praise our God. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest. highest and on Lord, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, my own God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Provident God, you teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be fashioned by your grace, so that we might be a dwelling pleasing to you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. 
Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they. Blessed the one who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the ways, uh, way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on the law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Our second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Sisters and brothers, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad. Your reward will be great in heaven. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward the disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Your reward will be great in heaven for their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of my earliest memories of this gospel is when I was thinking of entering the Jesuit order and was on a retreat at Wernersville. And this was the gospel of that Sunday. And uh, the priest started his homily by saying, today we have proof that Jesus was a rock star. He said, because if you look at the end of the gospel, he goes, whoa, 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 whoa which was probably one of the most common lines in rock songs in that era. But the other thing is, as he pointed out, he said, nobody really pays attention to the beginning. And he said, there are two important things we need to know about the beginning of this gospel, as Luke tells it. He said, first of all, Jesus stands on level ground with us. He said, it's not the Sermon on the Mount, it's the Sermon on the Plain. And he says, and most scholars take that to mean that Jesus looks us right in the eye. He said, but that's not what Luke says. He said, he raises his eyes towards us. 
Jesus actually looks up to us. How often do we hear that? Not very often, that Jesus looks up to us. It's the same in the story of the woman caught in adultery in the Gospel of John. Everyone else looks down on her. Jesus gets down on his knees and looks up at her because we are precious to the Lord. And so what do the Beatitudes in, the, in this context in Luke mean for us? Well, first of all, Jesus is not saying that I want you to be poor, I want you to suffer, I want you to be hungry, I want you to grieve and weep. He's saying these things will be part of your life. But when you are that empty, when you are hungry, when your heart is hurting and breaking, when there is nothing and you think nothing is there, I will fill you. And he's not condemning us for being full or being rich. He's saying, be careful what you're full with and what you're rich with because those are blessings from your provident God and they should not distract you from doing his work. And so for Luke, it's about equals going out and carrying out the mission to fill the hunger of others, to take away the poverty of others, to help others find the joy in Christ that we have found. And so we are called to be a blessing. You know, God loves that word. In the book of Genesis, when Abraham is called, nine times in one paragraph, God tells him he's going to be a blessing or that he's blessed. And then he says, you will be a blessing to others. It's exactly what God says to us today. You will be a blessing for others. Because centered in me and letting me fill your hearts and your lives with my presence, you will bring that presence to the world. And so we're actually Jesus' little rock stars. <laughs> we're the ones that sing his song. We're the ones that tell his story. We're the ones who fill the hungry with good things. We're the ones who take away the pain of poverty. We're the ones who wipe away each other's tears. And so we are blessed, and we go forth to be a blessing. He also talks about the treatment of prophets. And it's interesting because Luke, more than any other one of the evangelists, understood about prophets. Prophets tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. False prophets tell you what you want to hear, not what you need to hear. And of course, we like what we want to hear better. But we know what we need to hear. And today, Jesus says, open your ears, open your mind, open your hearts. Hear what I have to say. I look up to you. I send you. You are blessed. Be a blessing for our world. And now, my sisters and brothers, let us profess the faith we live and share each day using the Apostles' Creed, as is our family tradition. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now in that faith, let us turn to our provident God with these prayers we make for ourselves, our world, our church. Our response is, provident God, hear our prayer. For growth in faith, that we may recognize our need for God in every part of our lives, and deepen our trusting reliance upon God, who provides all that we need for life and wholeness, we pray. Provident God, hear our prayer. 
for new sight and for insight, that we may not be blinded by comfort or privilege to the struggles and suffering of others, we pray. Amen, God, hear our prayer. For an end to violence and the exploitation of the poor, that God will raise up those who are exploited in slave-like working conditions, are caught in human trafficking, and heal their wounds, leading them to a new life, we pray. God, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving, that those who have lost loved ones, their health or employment or freedom, may know the presence of God, who wipes away all tears and who brings light into every darkness, we pray. God, hear our prayer. For national leaders, that God will give them wisdom in addressing the issues that challenge society, free them from self-reliance, and inspire them to work for the common good, we pray. Proud of God, hear our prayer. For all refugees, that God will lead them to places of safety and help them to build new lives in communities that will welcome their gifts and talents, we pray. Proud of God, hear our prayer. For the protection and renewal of our earth, that God will inspire and guide us as we strive to be good stewards of the air, land, and water which God has given to us, we pray. Father God, hear our prayer. And for all who are sick, that God will restore them to health, help all to get good sleep, and strengthen all who care for the sick, we pray. Father God, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially for Olga and Antonio Giancola, for whom this Mass is being prayed, that they may share fully in the new life of the resurrection and live with our provident God forever, we pray. Father God, hear our prayer. Loving and provident God, once again we entrust our prayers to your care, confident that you will always do and give what is best for us, we might do and give to you and one another what is best for the world. We ask you to give our prayers the power of your word that all that we need may be accomplished in you for the glory of your name and the goodness of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. The fruit of the vine, the work of human hand, will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that the gifts we have prepared will be a pleasing, acceptable offering to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. May our offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our blessing and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and our Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion and death, so as to break the bonds of death forever and manifest the glory of the resurrection. And so, with all the angels and saints in heaven, we too proclaim your glory, as with one voice and one heart we acclaim and pray. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all life, all love, all holiness. Make holy, therefore, our gifts, we pray, through the power of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly his passion and death, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, and giving it to the disciples, said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup filled with wine. Again he gave you thanks, and giving the cup to the disciples said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of a new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his passion, death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation, giving thanks that you have found us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of faith, hope, and love, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the bishops, with the laity, consecrated and religious clergy, and all your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that one day, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles, Mary Magdalene, Marie de la Roche, Wilhelm Kettler, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we too be co-heirs of eternal life, and praise you and glorify you with Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Oh, our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming 
of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your people, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sacred gesture of that peace. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus, the center of our hearts and lives. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy and blessed are we who share the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only Don't say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we prepare to go our separate ways to be a blessing to one another in our world, let us pray for the gift of God's peace in our hearts, our homes, our community, our nation, our world, and our church. Lord, Lord be, be with us, us so that we might have a full range of fear to the changes in life. We are your very home, and, home, and we believe that you will lead us safely through all things. And when we cannot stand it, you will carry us in your arms. May we not fear what will happen tomorrow. You are our everlasting parent who cares for us today. And we believe that you will care for us every day. Lord, you will shield us from suffering and give us the unfailing strength to bear it. May we be at peace and so put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginations. In this peace, we know that the love of God surrounds us, the light of God shines in us, the Spirit of God hovers over us, the presence of God unfolds as us, and wherever we are, God is. Through Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, family like us, we ask all of this now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O provident God, that we may always long for this food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
May our provident God bless and keep us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration here now draws to a close. Our journey and mission as a blessing continues. We go forth in peace to love and serve our God and one another. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Thank you.